this is Chill Computer Guy. We are here in Bitwig Studio. This week, we are going to talk about clip-based automation. Now, you'll remember last time we spoke, we talked about track automation or global automation, which affects the entire track. Um, this time, we're going to talk about clip automation, which is actually attached to the MIDI clip. Now, let's kind of review what we went over uh, last week. We have our no hassle preset here in the PolySynth. This I actually pulled up this week. It's the PolySynth, the no hassle preset. Just an unbelievable default preset that Bitwig provides you for the PolySynth. You can see there's a blue dot there, so you can see we've automated the filter frequency. Very popular to automate that. Our three horizontal lines, if we open that, you can see the automation. You know, make curved automation, we can make points. We have a point here. Just to let you know that the automation on this, you can just pull and do curves. And, and so globally, the automation is just really, really great. Something that I noticed along the way is this automation lane. You can, I mean, you can really drag that out. I wish you could do that with the MIDI uh, lane as well. That would be super cool. Bitway, get on that shit. Because I would love to also re resize my mix channels. Um, this is global automation, so if you see here, we'll hit play. See, there's that filter frequency going all over the place. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our uh, clips here. And uh, you can see this is where we position our clips. Now, Bitwig Studio is very, very unique in this way, the fact that you have a clip launcher which is horizontal. You will see I have this on. Okay, I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to put my MIDI clip over here. I'm going to put it in, I'm going to move it from the track into a clip. And you will see there's no automation there, okay? So let's go ahead and control Z that. Now I'm going to click here, and this will link the automation to the clip in the track, in the track. So now if I drag this over, You'll see my automation follows. Now, a very unique thing about the clip launcher is you'll notice if I'm up above, and then if you hit Alt, you can actually name this, you know, and name it right there. Double click the MIDI to see the MIDI notes. Double click the automation to see the automation. Now, you will see that the automation has turned red. And why it has turned red is because it is now considered clip automation because it's in clip mode. By moving this over to the clip launcher, you have automatically turned this automation into clip automation. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means you have a lot more options. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unzoom this. Now, if we pull this back over and put it there, you'll see the automation follows. So over here, this is gonna get treated like clip-based automation. If I move it back to the track, it will automatically turn it into track automation. If I have this clicked, it will actually follow that automation down there. And then you can treat it just like global automation. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple of these because something that's very important is when you delete those, your automation stays. I don't know if, if, there, if the automation should stay, and I wish there was a way you could, like, have an option to have the the automation go when the clip goes because you would think since this is linked when I delete that clip the automation should be deleted as well so I don't know why that is but so I'm a little troubled by that but the thing that is unique about the uh, clip based automation is now I can make some alterations to this okay make all kinds of crazy alterations to this so what we've done is we've created two different automations. Now you will see, so all clip automation is tied to the clip. Tied to the clip. Now if I drag this out, and then let's say I loop this, and you'll see because this is clicked, it loops out. Now if I affect the automation in the clip, it's going to affect all the copies of it. That's a very important point. So you can see above me, all that automation is being affected. The entire loop is being affected. And so that's a very important point. The problem is what is track automation and what is uh, clip automation gets a little blurry when you start to pull stuff back and forth. 
Now again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this whole thing and see the automation stays. That's just so shitty. Why? Go control A. Let's go into edit mode. Now here's something with edit mode that I want Bitwig to improve on is I can see my mixer, but I want to be able to select my clips. In other words, I want to be in edit mode, but I want to be able to select my clips. Because I guess I can go there, but now I have to go to mix mode to get out my clip. So I click that. Now I go into edit mode. Okay, there I am. But now, let's say I want to I want to switch to a different clip. How do I fucking do that? How do I do that? Anyway, absolute automation is uh, exactly where you put the point. Now, if you go into relative automation, what that's going to do is it's going to give you an average between zero and wherever your automation's at. It's going to kind of average it out. So let's just put some automation points. Now let's go back to the absolute automation, and you can see some stuff has changed. You can see the red dark line that represents the absolute automation has been altered by the relative automation. So what you've done is you've effectively, you have averaged the absolute automation to more of a relative automation. Now, if you want a more extreme example, you can go into this. This is actually multiplying. Put a big stab right there and you go back to you can see that that's actually very, very definitive away from the red absolute automation. This is almost the opposite absolute automation. So it's much more effective. And you can put a curve on these as well. So you can see what that does is it, it created the curve, went to the absolute automation here. So the idea is way too complex to explain, but think of absolute as the automation's exactly where you're clicking. Think of relative as the automation is going to be somewhere in between this value, which is relative to the absolute value. This is multiplying that effect. So this is going to be a more dramatic. So if you use all three, you can really think of this as variation. Bitwig Studio is very much about getting that human feel to music. So you can see there's my absolute automation. This is relative, an average between this and this. An actual multiplicity mode is what this is. And that between the three of them, you can really create some massive variations in your automation and so that's pretty cool pretty unique let's go back to the arrange view here and you will see that uh, so if i play this you'll see if we go to that marker there's definitely some more that may sound just like chaos, but that automation is very analogy, and that's because of using absolute, relative, and multiplicity. Now, something to keep in mind. If this is orange, and you drag your clip over, your absolute values will follow. So you can see your dark lines, and you can see your keyframes for your automation. If I control Z that, if I turn that off, now I drag it over, it's only going to give you the relative values. In other words, you don't see any keyframes, you don't see any dark lines, because those are absolute values and those are not getting carried over. Now your timeline automation is all absolute values. So if I drag this point out, I can actually sweep this down and affect the relative automation using an absolute automation inherited by the track. So that is what is so confusing, but what is so powerful about clip automation. Think of it as global automation or track automation overrides the automation in the clips, but only if you're in a relative value. Now, if I drag this over here, okay, and I, and I, and I have this, this clicked, that's dragging over the absolute automation, which is defaults as global. So now if I drag this through, it's not going to affect that automation. You know, I still do have the relative values in there, but there's no way I can affect it with my absolute value from the global automation. So this is unchecked. Okay, so I'm dragging this over. So what I'm going to get is I'm only get my going to get my uh, my relative values. So I can drag them down based on this absolute value globally. Super super important. Just a very 
you know, confusing thing because this should be shaded red so you know it's of a relative value and it should be shaded red so you know that it is clip based automation and then once you pull it into the timeline you can plow right through it with your global automation your global automation will just plow right through this so the fact that you have both automation modes understanding them is key to using automation in Bitwig Studio and once you do understand them they're extremely powerful the main thing is remember it's all about this button okay if this button is on your clip automation will follow your global automation will loop okay if this button's off if you move a clip your automation stain if you move from clip automation onto the track it will only take the relative values it will not the absolute values will not carry over unless this is clicked so if I drag this over, I'm only getting those relative values, which you can see can be affected and overridden by the global levels here. Anyway, that's the magic of clip automation. Clip automation is very fluent because you have those relative values that you can combine with the absolute values and really get some dynamic and very human-like automation. And then when it comes to track mode, remember that's hierarchy. That's going to override the relative because it's always absolute automation. The two work hand in hand. You just got to understand that one button. That's the main button there. That button really affects it. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Chill Computer Guy, thanks again for watching.